Today's March 20th, 2017. It's a Monday. John, you sort of kind of have the day off because of uh, the Comey testimony on CNBC. They kind of make... Very true. Very true. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, yeah, I flew out at the usual, you know, break of dawn to get here uh, from uh, Chicago this morning and uh, anticipated that uh, the testimony might bleed a little into our show. Didn't think it would wipe out the whole show, but indeed it did. Didn't get to uh, go on air at all about it today, but nonetheless got to sit there and get paid for listening. It, it happens. <laughs> All right, so none of none of the Comey testimony is going to make us any money. So really, nothing to add to that. It's just amazing how they they're grandstanding this whole thing. It's not going to make your taxes go down. Oh yeah, well I, I'm with you, and I also thought it was kind of interesting, Andrew. When on the one hand, you know, when they're talking about Flynn, the gentleman who resigned, um, General Flynn, um, they're saying, well, you know, he got paid by sure. Ukraine. Yeah, and I'm thinking, you do know Ukraine is completely different from Russia, don't you guys? I mean, they're trying to, uh, um, I, I think a lot of people, unfortunately, are probably not up on the news enough, Andrew. Former Soviet states and so forth um, versus Russia versus Ukraine. I mean, uh, even Comey and uh, the Admiral who were up there were having to uh, sort of correct the folks about uh you know, what is Crimea? What is Ukraine? And they kept trying to conflate um, whether or not Russia was involved in the election, whether or not Trump knew they were involved, whether or not they were involved at all in changing the uh, votes or anything like that. And they said, well, no, we don't have any evidence of that. But yeah, it was just... It's been, as you say, grandstanding primarily and not a lot of things you can make money on. Unless you have some vodka distributorships. Yeah. America's perpetually stupid. You don't have <laughs> to agree is, with that. You know, quite frankly. And, well, you might be right, but I'd say virtually everybody else is pretty stupid, too. <laughs> it's, it's not just our yeah, country. It's just stupid. Anyway, um, I've been noticing a disturbing trend over the weekend. Not this weekend, but in general. Do tell. I think Facebook's dying. I think your teen traders are right. Really? Yeah, I just I see posts. I think the election kind of fatigued everybody. Nobody wants to hear about it anymore. People aren't posting. There's just like nobody's doing it anymore. I don't know. It's just a sixth sense that I have about the whole thing. And I, I don't think Snapchat's doing that great either. And I think that's kind of. Well, clearly Snapchat's not doing that great. Um, they rolled over in terms of. Uh, engagement in terms of people posting as soon as Facebook I've run that graph before but when Facebook started on WhatsApp and Instagram going after them head to head Facebook immediately jumped to the same numbers of people surprisingly you know about 150 million or so and Snapchat started to roll over um, engagement with their user base was dropping and the good news for Snapchat is that they got public and got a huge multiple, huge multiple. The bad news is they have a huge multiple that they got to try to justify. And quite frankly, Andrew, I don't know how they can. Um, people are saying, well, I wouldn't fade Evan, you know, one of the Snapchat Whatever. founders, or Murph, the other Snapchat co-founder. And they might be great guys, but uh, boy, why? What else have mm -hmm. they done? Do you want to tell me, you know, that these two guys, uh, it's just unbelievable. This is the PayPal mafia or something like that. You know, Evan Spiegel and Robert Murphy, uh, the, the two ones co-founders of Musk uh, book. Snapchat. The one mentioned in the Musk book. <laughs> the Elon Musk book we're reading, yeah, the PayPal yeah. mafia. I love that name. Got to read that book if you want to know what we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, I mean, about. I love PayPal. In detail. Ashley yeah. Vance author of that book folks andrew and i listened to it on audible and it is a yeah. great book it's, love it's it that whole thing to love respect. it um and just think andrew that book was closed up in late 14 early 15 i think put to sure. bed you know in other words sent to the presses and so forth and that's forever ago in tesla timeline and in spacex and for that matter 
um, in a lot of his other ventures, like, uh, you know, the uh, oh, Solar right. City acquisition Man. and all the rest. So, How but anyway, back to Snapchat. I don't think Snapchat, you know, like these two guys, again, might be great guys. Um, they've done one thing really good, figured out a way to get nudie pictures sent that disappear. Yeah, like that that was what the thing was founded on. And uh, has have they broken new ground someplace, Andrew, that, that I have yeah. missed? Hey, you know that girl that I follow on that I don't girl think so. that I um follow on Snapchat, that Playboy girl, Kennedy Summers. The only reason I follow yep. her because she was on Fox Business mm -hmm. and they put her up as like a day trader. She has never posted anything about day trade. Oh exactly. yeah, right. But you know, Fox put on. Yeah, somehow, sh somehow, I think she just somebody knew that they that she was a good looking woman that they wanted to get on uh, uh, Fox and oh, yeah. use the excuse oh, of yeah. day trading. Oh, I will oh, bet yeah, totally. you money. So that's why I followed her, and I follow her now because of this. And I and I kind of rib her in a funny way, like, hey, you know, <clears throat> you know. Did, did you do this in trading? You know, and I've played with her a few times, and she just doesn't get the joke. She just, you know. She said this weekend, because now I still follow her like stupid me. She says, I'm getting off of Snapchat. She does. She didn't realize that the photos, you could click them and save them. But they're all of her, but they're not like, does it, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, stupid. Yeah. So she's she's leaving Snapchat, and she, you know what? She was on Snapchat this morning. She posted a picture of her cat. So, <laughs> well, that I mean, all you got to do is pull up, uh, you know, the uh, the option volumes in there, and the fact that as soon as people could borrow it, they just beat the crap when out of it. When do options stock. start trading on it? I mean, it was hard to borrow, and it still is. The op options man, trade what three weeks after hard. it goes public, right? So it should be like another two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. No, it it they they started March 10th, just a week after it went. Well, a week and a day after Snap went public, and volatility started out, you know, high, and it's just gone down. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at them right now. And uh, that's not because things are calm in Snap. It's because they don't see a lot, a lot of opportunities. I see in some Snap. activity there all across the board. Just people hedging. It looks like. Different positions. I mean, it's still trading, you know, uh, on a daily basis, almost double puts to calls. Today it's double. It's 184,000 puts and snap to 100 and, uh, no, I'm sorry, 220,000. Ah, crap. It's moving too fast. 256,000 um, puts to 168,000 calls. That was as of just a few okay. minutes ago. Keep that on your so that's a that's still a lot of hey, puts. So what's uh, what's going on with Wisconsin beating Villanova this weekend? Well, my good friend Jim Chanos. Uh, Chanos is with uh, uh, has a big hedge fund. Um, he's was featured in Vanity Fair. In fact, I think in one of the recent issues as like you know is he a what he is guy? Uh, a brilliant guy that yeah, and he went to. Not the university, but he went to, oh, shoot, um, up in Milwaukee. He, he went to school up there, and the, but he's, been a, he's from Wisconsin. He's a huge fan, and he and I go back and forth about it a lot, and luckily we were both long Wisconsin, and these last two victories in particular, of course, the big one over uh, Villanova wow. in the NCAA, knocking out last year's champ, was huge. For Wisconsin, so made us some money. Got to, got to like right, that. Speaking of money, you seen some activity in CSX? Yeah, uh, CSX, another one that Andrew and I follow a lot, folks. Um, CSX, big transportation giant, um, basically uh, rail-based uh, transportation. But you know they've got other logistics stuff other than just rail, rail to truck transfer. In other words, intermodal um, stocks trading up uh, basically to 47 and change, just three bucks off two-week high, and a lot of upside call buying in uh, in that one today. So uh, oh, keep an eye that. on it. It's 52 and a half. June 48 June. calls, and then June uh, 52, 52 50 52 calls 50s. too. Wow. 20,000. 
Does that not stick out? The open interest was five. Nice. Yeah, that that's a big opening trade. And just above where the stock is, so it's not an unrealistic deal. It's not like somebody thinks, oh, my gosh, you know, this is going up so high. They're just basically saying, hey, I think it goes up, you know, another three or four bucks by June. Why buy a $48 stock or $47 stock when you can buy a call spread that this person anyway paid about a buck thirty for something that could go to uh, um, the difference between the 48 calls that they own and the 52 50s that they're short. So that's four and a half bucks paid about a buck thirty for something that could go to four and a half. Seems like a pretty nice risk reward to me. Okay, We'll keep an eye on that. All right. We're still right at 10 minutes. I think our listeners will be ready for another one tomorrow. All right. Yeah, we'll have some good stuff for you tomorrow, folks. I'll update you on Aspen, the World Cup, and seeing the Trumps out there oh, yeah. in uh, Aspen this past uh, weekend. I'll tell you all about oh, it tomorrow. Right. In the meantime, please tell your friends about the show. And uh, sign up for daily alerts uh, over at either iTunes or YouTube. Okay.